Welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, we will learn about human capital formation in India. We have already learned that human capital formation is the outcome of investment in education, health, on-the-job training, migration and information. Out of all these elements, education and health are very important source of human capital formation. We know that our, uh, that our is a federal country with a union government, state governments and local governments. Local governments include municipal corporation, municipalities and village panchayat. The constitution of India mentions the functions to be carried out by each level of government. Accordingly, expenditure on both education and health are to be carried out simultaneously by all the three tiers of the government. Education and health care services create both private and social benefits. As a result, both private and public institution exist in the education and health service market. Now we come to the topic that why there is a need for government intervention. The expenditure on education and health assume great importance on the formation of human capital. So it is very important that such expenditure provides positive results. To ensure favorable benefits, government intervention is important because of the following reasons. And that first reason is, the expenditures on education and health make substantial long-term impact and they cannot be easily reversed. For example, if a child is admitted to a school or healthcare center, and required services are not provided in such institute, then substantial amount of damage would have been done before the decision is taken to shift the child to another institution. Next reason is that individual consumers of these services do not have complete information about the quality of services and their cost. Next reason is the providers of education and health services may acquire monopoly power and may get involved in exploitation. So the role of government is important to ensure that the private providers of these services adhere to the standards stipulated by the government and charge the correct price. We can take the example of polio. There was a campaign called Polio Free India. It was possible due to government intervention only. In the past, very less people were aware about polio and its vaccination. But due to the constant information provided by the government and various NGOs, people are now well aware of polio and India has already achieved 99% eradication and only a few pockets of polio are left behind. So that is why government intervention is necessary. Now we come to the regulatory authority how government exercise control over these institutions. First in education, the ministries of education at the union and state level and departments of education and various organizations like National Council of Education Research and Training that is NCERT, University Grant Commission that is UGC and All India Council of Technical Education that is AICTE regulate the education sector. And in health, the ministries of health at the union and state level departments of health and various organizations like Indian Council of Medical Research, that is ICMR, regulate the health sector. So these are certain authorities that regulate these industries. Now we come to the point that what are the basic education and health care that the fundamental rights of every citizen? In a developing country like India, a large section of the population lives below the poverty line and are unable to afford basic education and health care facilities. Moreover, a substantial section of our people cannot afford to reach super speciality health care and higher education. Furthermore, when basic education and health care is considered as a right of the citizen, then it is essential that the government should provide education, and health services free of cost for the deserving citizens and those from the socially oppressed classes. Both the union and state governments have been raising expenditures in the education sector over the years 
in order to fulfill the objectives of attaining 100% literacy and health facilities for all. Now, let's see some primary education schemes which are uh, running in India right now. Government has initiated a number of schemes to achieve its dream of education for all. Uh, let us discuss three of such schemes. First one is Service Shiksha Abhiyan, that is SSA. After the district primary education program of 1994, the government launched the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan. It was launched in 2001 to universalize and improve the quality of elementary education in India through community ownership of elementary education. The SSA is being implemented in partnership with states to address the needs of children in age group of 6 to 14 years. Now let's see some of the achievements under SSA, which is up to uh, September 30, 2007, which include construction of 1,70,320 school buildings, construction of 7,13,179 additional classrooms, provisions of 1,72,381 drinking water facilities, construction of 2,18,075 toilets, opening of 1,86,985 new schools, supply of free textbook to 6.64 crore children and appointment of 8.10 lakh teachers. Now we come to the next scheme that is National Program for Education of Girls at Elementary Education. Uh, the program aims to enhance education for girls by providing additional support for development of a model girl child friendly school. Under this program, 35,252 model schools have been opened in addition to supporting 25,537 early childhood care and education centers. Beside 34,387 additional classrooms have been constructed and 1.85 lakh teachers have been given training on gender sensitization. Now we come to the last scheme that is Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyale KGBV. This scheme was launched in July 2004 for setting up residential schools at upper primary level for girls belonging predominantly to the SC, that is Scheduled Caste, ST, Scheduled Tribe, and OBC, other backward classes, and minority communities. The scheme ran a separate scheme for two years, but was merged with Sarva Siksha Abhiyan from uh, April 1, 2007. As on October 31, 2007, 1,564 KGBVs are functional and uh, 1,9786 girls were enrolled to them. So these are some primary education schemes which are running in the government. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.